Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of uh, me playing Continuo at you, I guess. <laughs> I'm just going to get right into this. We're going to play a little bit of Telemon today again. Just a little bit more Telemon, okay? And so this one is called Delightful Loneliness. Lowliness. Delightful Loneliness. And um, it's kind of an interesting piece because it brings sort of a common debate and question that you have with continual playing especially this is a little bit more of a rambunctious one it's it's a little bit shorter but you also have these dotted eighth notes and sixteenth notes which i'll show you in a second but you're posed with this question okay am i supposed to play these short and clipped am i supposed to play these with a little bit more like energy with a little bit more thickness you know there's kind of a lot of different schools of thought i think it all comes down to really what the what the piece what kind of it wants so we're gonna play it then we're going to talk about it. So you'll notice, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of this here. So now you'll notice right here, we've got this pattern, this thing, one, two, three, and. So now we are posed with a question, everyone, a question. Uh, is this supposed to be equal and right on the money? Are we allowed to have a little bit of doobie doobie stuff in there? You know, get a little Inigal action. All right, it is Telemon, so technically you can sort of, right, you know, if we're going to enter the arena, the battle arena of can we use Inigal. Um, I like to think about it, you know, this is a gesture. And, you know, the way that they were notating stuff back then was slightly limited by, you know, practicality. And so we're just going to take this with context. And we're going to kind of see. So I would just, we're going to play this first measure here. And I'm going to play it super on the money. We're going to see what that sounds like. So one, two, three, four. One. <laughs> One, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, right? I hate it. Honestly, I hate it. <laughs> it sounds, sounds really weird. <laughs> I mean, if you want to play it like that, you go ahead. Go ahead and do it. Uh, but I just think it sounds kind of like neutered. Anyways, um, let's play this with a little bit more. We're going to kind of like triple ties these just a bit just a bit all right just a bit okay so we have okay i, I triple ties it a lot there but let's let's maybe back off from that just a bit we have so those really changed the feel of that right i felt like that third one was really pushing it towards something maybe that's not what you want because if you look at the uh, vocal line up here, we have kind of this right, right, and so we have this thing that's going on over there, and so I think personally to avoid kind of syndrome, but you'd really have to do in a part like that. You have to go the, and we're going to lengthen that out. We are going to use a bit more bow action here. The so you'll notice what I'm trying to do here. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's kind of the danger of these strokes is that, you know, it's a little high risk, high reward. Okay, so we have the... You notice how I'm using a lot more bow on these? I'm keeping it very connected, actually, to the string, which is actually a little counterintuitive. And I want to just talk about that for a second. Just because something is lively and rambunctious does not automatically mean that it's short. In fact, I would say 
the opposite is, is that usually something is less short when it's kind of this aggressive and rambunctious and has all this energy, right? And so what this would mean is that instead of going, right, which is, would be more like this, where we put dots like here, you know, right? Instead of doing that, maybe what we do is this. So we're gonna use that F sharp as a pedal tone, and we're gonna just keep pushing it. And what that does is it gets you away from that vertical, uh, 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 and it does, it goes bum, beating, beating, ba dam ba dam. That's what you want, right? At least that's what I want. So we have that section. Now let's talk about something that is incredibly important. Number one, the very first note. What character is that note supposed to be? So this is something that's really easy when you've got an instrument that has lots of plucks or notes, like harpsichord, something like that. You can just really have them exp do like a nice big landing pad, right? But if we don't have that, like in this case, we gotta think about that. So let's play, let's think about this a couple different ways. A couple different ways. First way, we're gonna think about this statement. <laughs> little bit of a little bit of a front on there you notice how I'm I'm gonna give it a little bit of a front I'm just gonna go we've got that attack in the beginning we've got a nice long tail and let's try a bit more attack uh, let's see that's easy to I don't know I don't like that one I think it's too rough it's too right and so what about less attack I just, I don't really think that's the right idea. Like we kind of want, right? And also, if you guys notice, there is another way we can talk about this. We have a note and then we have a vocal note and then we meet up with the vocalist. So with that in mind, I think it might be a good idea. It might be a good idea to go, Dun. and leave a little space for them to go wah, right? So we have rah. right? And also with this stroke over here, you can play around with just a little bit of bow things. So I think what I've landed on with that first note, at least for me, is you want it to be a statement, but you don't want it to be like a slap in the face, right? And so that means with our bow hand, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get right in there and we're just gonna go start the note cleanly and just let it ring a bit. So that means, right? And that's what you want to avoid. You see how I chipped it right there? I went like eh. That means I'm not making enough connection at the beginning of my note. What that means is that I need to put just the right amount of weight in, feel it in my fingers here, make that connection, pull the bow off, right? So you have the Now I, personally would say to do this up, up, down, right? But you can do this like this. Or, you know, down, down, up, down. But I think one, that's the, that's the gesture. It's this whole thing it goes one, right? It's not like dun, 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 okay? So again, it's my opinion. So moving on from that, we have all right, and this is why we are playing things a little bit more on the string, because what we want to avoid is having this one sound picky, right? You never want things to sound picky, unless you really want them to sound picky. But we go, right? Notice how we have pedal tone. We're pointing out the D in the harmony. And then we have a... That's going to be more of a scale. And that's going to come away, as is tradition, with cadences such as this. So what you want to avoid here, a nice way to add a little bit of style, we just have that, right? And so then what we avoid is... Right? We have... A, and what that does is it's ending the phrase. And that really comes down to your bow. We're going to go... Uh, so when I do these things, I like to stay away from the frog. Okay, we go up, right? Up. And so the real trick here is going, 
that. Getting that A to not go, right? So we want to, and you notice how I'm using my fingers so nicely to come up, and then we come back in. And that's that classic down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up kind of energy. And you'll notice I'm using the bow, I'm using this energy to come around here and grab that top note so nicely. So we have a, ah, yes. And it's still energetic, but it still goes, it still keeps going on. Now, you'll notice in the bar before it, in this bar with the scale, we have a, and with something like that, I'm gonna say, you just gotta keep it on the string. You guys got Right? That's a hard passage right there, okay? So don't biff it like I just did. So now let's move on to this next part. We have uh So two things that are very similar. We have a very clear B section. B section, right? We have this kind of tonal ambiguous thing up here. Ah, uh, but we're actually in G major. Are we in G major? Yes, we are in G major. Okay, so what I like to think about is we have that C natural. If you look here, we have a C natural in there, like right there. You see, we got it right there. We've got it kind of right here too. Okay, so up here, we have a nice C natural. And what we're gonna think about here is, do we want it to be, right? Or is the fact that that is a C natural going to be enough to solidify, yes, that is a C natural. So listen to it, this is what, highlighting the chromatic step. We have, and this is without highlighting it. I don't know. I would tend to say don't lean into stuff like that in this case because it's just one, two, three. It's not one, two, three. But if it was one, two, three, and one, two, three, right? That's something else, right? But this is just one, two, three. So we have getting ourselves out in the bow. And Again, with this one, what we're doing is we're going a, right? We're getting ourselves, you want to probably get yourself out just to give yourself that color. And then we go back and you can count on the, those to be bright and open no matter what you do. So you can just kind of count on that coming out of the texture there. So what I like to do with these kind of things is we have, and then, how I'm almost like not playing those. It's more of like a. Right? And so what that does is you'll notice G's and D's and C's, they ring. They ring, right? They ring a lot. And so you want to control that sometimes. You know, you don't want it to be like this heavy ringing texture going on in the background. All right? So now let's finish it up. Let's finish this up. We have, uh, ooh, that's gonna be some nice dissonance, right? We have, all right, so we have a classic little doobie 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 over here, right? So you think, you think it's gonna do it again. You think he's gonna do it a third time over here, but then he doesn't. What he does is he does this thing, right? So now let's highlight that just a bit. So we have, now I like to put a little edge on that G sharp because I like to think of it leading into that next thing. I think of that sounds pretty good. So we go. And on this one, on this next little figure here, I really would say, try and think about it going into the end, starting from here. So we have. Notice what that does is, is it separates it from the other part and when it, it just funnels you nicely into the end, sort of your mind, it just funnels your mind into the end, right? So let's just talk about what I did there. We're gonna make this part be a bit more connected. 
just gonna connect that. And then we're gonna have this dun, 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 bomb, right? We have a forte and then we go down to something probably more in a piano. All right, so now let's talk about that with our bow. With our bow, we have, and then we're out here at the tip and then we have, and I like to connect these all. Because then you step away from, right, we're in hoedown land. We don't want to be in hoedown land. We want, and so I like to almost think about it like a, like a dun, 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 dun. So we get like a nice little rhythmic feel there. All right, and then to end it, I would say probably in the second ending here, you'll notice what I'm gonna do with my hand. I'm gonna go. Now you notice how I'm staying away from going. Right? That doesn't need that. However, that's probably what you want to do. What you want to do is you just want to... Yeah. And you notice how the... If you play the D in tune, you can get this nice resonance going, and then it just sort of establishes that, like, okay, I'm playing Ds. I'm just playing D, okay? And that's very helpful. So to kind of hear that in action there, on the last line, we have... I don't know. It's kind of lame going away from it, you know what I mean? So maybe I just, I kind of felt like it was weak. Like, I like guess it's kind of weak there at the end, you know? I don't know, just, uh... So I think maybe if you were ending this, what you would need to go... Just really make sure you get that first one to... So that would be the trick with this is, and that really would come down to the group that you have. If you had like a big group, then yeah, you wouldn't want to goose that at all. But if it was just you, then probably you'd have to make a bigger deal out of it for, you know, example, like what I'm doing right now. So also there's a little jump in here to a topic. We talk about realization on the cello. Now I am a, sort of come down to a minimalist state with that. I don't like to throw in a whole bunch of chords. I don't like to do all that stuff. I think that the only reason why you should be realizing on the cello is if you're trying to do something, like you are trying to point the ear towards something. It's not just to do it to do it, right? And so this is a great place to make that happen for yourself. So for example, you'll notice here up in the vocal part, we have not a lot of movement. Okay, that's your first cue. You're not stepping on anyone's toes. We have a nice six, four, five, three, and this is just pretty much a five, one, right? Five, one, A major, D major. So what I would do here is the, that's kind of simple, right? The, so we stay in position, right? We uh, stay in position over here, the, all we're doing here is we're just adding in this open D. The See how I'm going? So we get a little bit of voice leading in there too, which is kind of nice. And also what we're solidifying is that texture of one, two, one, right? Instead of one, two, one, we have one, two, one, two, one, right? <laughs> Also saves you from having to like right you're just not gonna be able to play that in tune realistically I mean you totally can but then it's gonna sound kind of lumpy right and if you do anything that has the D going up then that means you have to solve it a different way so I just like to think you know the if you were trying to be fancy Right, trying to add a little bit of fancy in there. I'm gonna try and talk a little bit more about realizations in our later ones, but I'm just gonna say it right now. I think as a cellist, don't think like a guitar player or a harpsichord player, think like a cellist, right? Arpeggios, using thirds and quick chords that sort of establish tonal areas in your ear. Also just, you know, breaking chords, that's always a good idea. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this version of playing continue with me. I hope that you now have something to practice. I will try 
and post this annotated thing at the end of this video. Anyways, have a great week and I will see you in the next episode.